All right, I believe we are live now. Hello, everybody. This is Devin, also known as Cyrect. If you ever played Smash Bros, you might know me. And today we will be having it is uh, Burn Creek Silver versus Kit Solano. Now, I'm sure. Wait a second, this is Blind Pick. I swear to God. <clears throat> All right, we apologize for that intermission. Once again, this is Devin, also known as Cyrect, and we will be now continuing with Burn Creek Silver versus Kit Solano. And we actually just came off of watching Burn Creek play. So it's going to be interesting how they can recoup after what looked like a devastating loss. I did tune in a little bit for it, and it seemed like they were just outclassed, really. They tried to play a bit of aggro early game, it seemed like, with a spicy Scion jungle pick, but it didn't turn out very well for them. And they kind of just got stomped by Vantech. Of course, from what I've seen, Vantech won the better teams. So, either way, though, I was told that Burn Creek Silver are expected to get out of groups, but this doesn't seem to be the case with them constantly losing. I could be corrected on that. But let's actually pay attention to these bans now. The Heimer ban actually does make sense. They do have uh, Pain, who does play that Heimer. Or sorry, not Pain, it was... No, it was Pain. Pain does play some Heimer. Orn, which is an interesting ban. I guess they just don't want to deal with Orn, because I don't think anyone actually on Burn Creek plays Orn. The Draven makes sense, because Saren is that high-ranking Draven player. Wait, are they actually in order? Because... Hmm. Whatever. Jace also makes sense. Um, Awkward does play... Jace. It's definitely one of his best champions. Mordban away. And we're going to see this first big core deck. He's going to opt for... He is a Rumble player. But he decided to go... Oh, sorry. No, I'm completely messing up everyone. They're, are they? They're, yeah, they're not in um, the LCS order, I believe. Because their top laner is Papa Smurthen. Unless they're doing some sort of interesting switch where Pablo Smurling is now the jungler. And so we're going to actually be seeing Cordex, who was, a, I believe, the jungler of the previous game. He's going to be playing on that Darius. He's going to try to carry his team with that, of course. 
Papa Smurf thing. Gonna go for seems like the Hecarim. So we got an offensive. Two insane strong carries, really. That can really just go in at light speed. Well, we have something a little bit more conventional on the side of Kitsilano with the Lysana, Lysandra Gragas. Of course, everyone knows and loves Gragas in pro play. Lysandra, I mean, she got nerfed. It's the only real reason why you don't see her anymore. But, oh, they actually lock in the Elise? That is interesting. So this Gragas is actually going to be flexed elsewhere on the map because I doubt the Elise would go to a lane. It hasn't really been a laner since Season 2. And now let's see what they're going to go for the bands. I mean, Gragas can obviously go for lane. He can be played lane or support, but I don't know. Just You don't see support Gragas super often outside of the highest levels of the play. And lane Gragas is kind of dead. Who knows, it could be an AP Gragas. Why isn't like AP mid? <clears throat> you can see they actually have a pretty um steamrolly just auto give team fighting situation on uh burn silver, which is going to be interesting to see. You know, you got that Ariana and they have that uh Hecarim fear and the darius pole to kind of actually set this all up just put the ball on one of them and there you go you're golden the ivern burn band away that one's spicy because they already picked their jungler so that could have just been an oopsie maybe they're just hard bming maybe they missed the ban i don't know but that's going to be <laughs> not ideal i would think Magana bond away makes sense when you have this sort of composition. Can definitely prevent that hard engage that they're looking for. Now we're gonna see how they're gonna run out this roster on the kit side. Because they have three AP people. They have two characters that can go tanky. Okay, they're gonna go for the vein, which is actually perfect when you got these two bruiser s type of champions. It is an ADC with self-peel, and you already have a ton of peel with the Elise stun, the Gragas knockaway, and the Lissandra ultimate. <clears throat> so that's going to be interesting. Kaisa is going to be locked in, which I know Pain does play a bit of Kaisa, but not his absolute most played. Of course, pretty much every AD carry player in their mothers can play Kaisa. She's not really that hard because of how insanely strong she is. And then they're going to run it out with the Soraka. So it seems like they are forced to pick an order, which does mean it is a lane Elise. So Auker going for a really spicy pick right now. He is a high ranking. Um, he is a high ranking mid laner, but it's kind of weird to see him go with the Elise of all champions. And, you know, actually you got a pretty typical draft at the end of the day for Burn Silver. You got all these pretty conventional characters, maybe not the most popular at the super high ranks. And Palpa Smurthing decided to go with Ghost. The thing with, like, Hecarim, you can go either Flash, Ignite, or Ghost. Um, if you're going Conqueror, I think Ignite is the best for that healing. While the Ghost obviously is pretty common because you want to just be fast and strong well we got a bit of a spicy pick comp from the opposite side on kits you know you always got these hard cc you got the pike pole you got pretty much every way imaginable to lock someone down but you also have pretty good team fighting oh no they actually did switch around okay so it is the gragas mid so i believe we're in the intermission soon And I guess with the Gragas mid, it's not that different. It is just two mages in the side lanes, which honestly is that surprising. Maybe the picks aren't that conventional, but either way, like I said, they just have so many ways to lock you down that if you get caught, there's just absolutely no way you're getting out. I don't care if you're Darius. I don't care if you're a hackram. You have that tankiness. 
or the Soraka heal, you're dead. There's no way you're surviving that. Pretty much all these champions can do high burst damage when you think about it. Maybe Vayne not so much. He wants to get those three hits. But, you know, I got the Lissandra burst damage, Gragas burst damage, Elise, lots of burst damage. And Pike, super burst damage. And so we will be going to the match very soon, but as you know, it is a spectator delay. But either way, I think we will be going to an intermission now that we have just still a little bit of time to kill. <sighs> Legends never die when the world is calling you. Can you hear them screaming out your name? Legends never die. They never lose hope when everything's cold and the fighting's near. He's deep in their bones, they're running too smoke when the fire is fierce. Just a tad bit before. <clears throat> okay, you can cut in. You can cut back in. Alright, everybody, we are back into the match, and so. I swear to gosh, every time I see, like, a team just not trade any of their champions, which is exactly what. Um burn blue just did or not burn blue burn silver just did i keep thinking that you're not allowed to actually switch it and it's just completely screwing me so it is actually going to be that greg is mid for aqua which is more conventional than that uh elise but oh they're looking for something spicy already 
I mean, like I said, they have that pick composition. They have the pike spear to bring them in. I guess it's more like a harpoon, but they're pretty much the same thing. And I believe Snorlax might have gone for... Oh, wait, I am freezing. Oh, okay, we're good. They are looking for... Oh, yeah, I should also mention... They all went Omni Stone on the side of Kitsilano. And so, if you don't know how this rune works, well, this is the perfect game to learn exactly what it is. It's basically just rune roulette. You roll a random rune, you use it, and then you roll a new one. So, team for fun here on Kitsilano. They're, they couldn't find any fun on the red side of the jungle, as Hecarim will be starting blue. So... Um, beforehand, everyone started red, but ever since preseason, where they pretty much buffed the crap out of blue and nerfed red, you can definitely see why they would want to go for these blue starts. And so, yeah, just going to start it off just as is. Papa Smurf, a little bit low health, but Hecarim usually doesn't have the worst clear, so it's not too bad. I don't expect this to be the most passive landing phase, though. And already, yeah, you can see Akuru got that level 2 advantage and body slams him in. So yeah, Lolly already losing half of his health. In this range versus melee matchup, usually not what you want to do starting in. While on the other hand, you have the top lane where it's actually the opposite. The ranged is already winning. Yeah, Akuru's just bullying him. He kind of got... An unlucky roll, though. He got press the attack, which you're not going to proc as the melee champion against range. You're just not. Already, you can see from the CS difference, it's starting to stack up from uh, top lane. But at the same time, that is that big wave coming in. So it's all up to how much Trinity can deny from Cordex. We did actually see um, a kind of swishy do because Cordex was the jungler of the previous game and Papa Smurving was the uh, top laner. And so they're just trying to switch it up. You know, get that mental reset, I guess. On the other side, you can actually see Snorlax already trying to clear out that blue, but they already took that um, blue buff, so not a whole lot he's going to gain from that side. Either way, though, they're just going to be doing their Scuttle Crabs. They're pretty much even as is, so it's whatever. But, ooh, actually, if you look at the uh, mid lane, they're looking for that gank. Is he going to land the Cocoon is the question. Um, no, he's not going to. He actually just goes a completely wide. That's a bit of an oopsie from Kits. I guess maybe it was a bit of miscommunication. Didn't quite react to the, um, by the time maybe it was a... Uh, I don't know. Either way, though, Cordex actually going in, and he's going to flash away from that Q because it would have given him that max stack. Smart flash, I would actually say. And he is getting an official gold lead because that wave is equalizing. Um, Lolly is actually falling in the mid lane, and he's going to actually be okay from the command protect. And so... It's good that he survived, but look at the CS difference already from the mid lane. And he might actually just lose this entire wave, but I think it was maybe a cannon, so it won't be too much he'll miss. No, he's gonna miss it, yeah. No TP, nothing. So... Yeah. Uh, Lolly... Already kind of losing this lane pretty hard. You can already see the gold lead starting to set in. On the other hand, you got Pop Smurfing coming in, immediately gets rooted, cannot pull Trinity in time with the Darius Apprehend. And so he's going to make it out of their lives. So no kills just yet, but there is still action going on. It's not a completely dead game. The bot lane has been pretty passive either way. I mean, Soraka is a pretty good equalizer to that aggressiveness that the pike would bring. And so to see this not be uh, too action heavy in the bot lane, not too surprising. You actually got a bit of a CS lead from Pain as well, which is kind of nice. Just gonna miss that spear barely. 
But Ocker, ooh, he's going in. Gonna get himself a barrel to um, kind of zone him away. Again, CS lead only growing. That's basically a kill in terms of CS difference. The top lane actually equalized, though, with that offensive engage by Cortex, and he has a flash advantage, which is nice. There's a chance we might see Papa Smurthing coming up there, but if he's trying to path towards that dragon that is already gone. The mountain, I don't see it working too much for um, Kitalano, but it is good to deny from these two bruisers on the side of Burn Silver. And so, either way, that's a worthwhile pickup because Smurfing was back in base. Okay, well, it seems like everyone's kind of getting not so good rolls on their <laughs> Omni Stone. You had a lethal temple from Trinity, and then you had that <laughs> the Comet vein. Even the Q doesn't proc it. You can only do it with E. <laughs> that actually sounds really fun, though. Like, just do it to troll. You go Comet E, you just stun someone to the wall, <laughs> your Comet hits them. It's probably terrible, but it would be funny. Okay, Lethal Temple, that's a bit more of a standard rune. Potentially going to look for an engage now. Yeah, you can see he's already prepping it up, but... Pain actually playing this pretty smartly and making sure to stay behind his minions from that hook. We might not see much action on that bot lane, really. It's just going to be a lot of, like, uh, threatening, but no real action. Oh, Flash Body Slam! And that's the one shot, but... He's just barely going to survive, thanks to a really well-timed Command Protect. He does take that barrier away, but, I mean, he's denying even more CS. Look at that, only 38 CS. Papa Smurthen gonna go in. There's no flash on this guy, so... But he's actually gonna turn this around onto Papa Smurthen. But Ocker is going to most definitely fall to that Noxian Guillotine for First Blood. So, nice roam there from Cordex, but you can see he is going to lose a decent chunk of that wave. While it does mean positive in the gold department, it does mean he's down in experience. So you can take that as you will. But hey, oh, he's actually going in in the top lane BC, but Inno Tortoro, he's also looking for some action, but you all know and love Pike, he's just going to heal a lot of that damage up. But either way, a health lead for uh, that burn green bot lane. Why do I keep calling it green? It's silver. There's so many like colors and stuff. They should have just called themselves like named themselves after like birds or something. I don't know. But Cordex actually in a bit of a 60 situation. Yeah, he's gonna get locked down. There's no way he's getting out of that. I also just learned from that interaction that Cordex went uh, Nimbus cloak. Which actually sounds really hype on a Ghost Darius. <laughs> you go even faster. But doesn't matter how fast you go when you got that point and click stun. And it seems like Snorlax has been much more high impact. Because you can see he's getting all those objectives while still equalizing on uh, gank pressure. Like both of them have gotten a gank for each other. But, that is a mountain and, and my friend, the Rift Herald. And it's before 10 minutes, so there's a very good chance. But, oh, they're actually going to look for some sort of engage burn silver. It's going to actually hit a really good one. Cordex predicts the, the claw. But that is going to be Snorlax falling down at the cost of, oh, wait a second. No way, man. No way. Last second flash after the repel. And he's going to make it out. Snorlax, just barely. Actually, no, he's he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Wait, the cocoon! What? Okay, there's no way. There's no way. Okay, he's gonna get hit by that Void Seeker, but they're going for more action. Awkward knocks away, pops smirthing. And actually, we got a team bouncing back from what was a really bad, bad defeat from what was previous. And so, yeah, nicely done there, actually. It seemed like a bit of a misplay from Awkward's side, but either way, 
A good fallback. Oh, Vayne actually... I said Vayne instead of Pain, but Eno Turtle is going to fall to Pain, actually playing that really smartly. So nicely done by him, and he's actually winning this lane pretty handedly. Um, I did mention that Cortex did go uh, mid lane to get that first blood, but you can see actually it was at the cost of so much CS. He is down a kill and CS pretty much. So, oh wait, Pain actually might be looking for a dive, but no, he doesn't have the uh, ultimate, and he's actually going to get collapsed on by this Elise. He's going to find a kill onto Saren. A bit of mispositioning there, and Snorlax is just forced to get away. Is he going to find himself one? He will, but he might actually just fall to this Kaisa, who's getting really fed. Snorlax just walked in a straight line and took that. So, yeah, a bit of an oopsie, actually, from Snorlax. He could have definitely survived that if he just didn't walk in a straight line. Ooh, Orker, actually. Getting a bit of deep vision. He was thinking about going for a engage, but planning not to otherwise. Oh, he actually finds on to Lolly Looter, but the Shockwave into the Hecarim charging in is going to deny that. Is he going to time his um, Onslaught of Shadows with the Flask? He's not going to bite anymore. Because they know Turtle is actually coming up, and he might go for that execute. Awkward. <laughs> actually going out in a bit of a sneaky play there. <laughs> he did, yeah, he made it out. <laughs> so, lucky for him. I mean, he is 0-2, but at the very least, he's getting out with his life. Mal energy why he's going to fall in a bit of a hasty attempt to get more vision. And so yeah, more plates are going to start falling, and it's going to actually equalize his gold lead completely. And we're starting to look really good for Burn Silver, and it's still 100% in their grasp, but that is a big pickup to get all those plates. Great ultimate actually from the Pop Smurfing, and just going to charge in with that vein, that uh, Kaisa ult. The prison. Oh, and the a miss from Eno Turtle. Not going to get any execute with that ultimate. Um, Pain almost just falling to the execute. Nice flash from the Bally Slam. Pain choosing to go back in potentially, but he doesn't have anything left really besides raw damage. But yeah, four kills on that Kaisa is kind of big. Let's just say that right now. Um, okay, so Akra actually finding so many picks despite being so down in that score. But at the same time, Pain is going to find himself a fifth kill onto that X Trinity. And they are calling for a lane swap because you can see Saren starting to path towards that top lane, trying to get some sort of gold, but. That does give up so much control from the side of Kits. And so, yeah, they're going to try to go for this dragon. They are really unhealthy, so I don't think they can do this anymore. Yeah, Awkward did a great job poking them out. That they don't really have much of a way to defend this. And that's two drakes to nothing. And this is the exact drake that they want. Oh, that was actually really close from stealing it. The Prey Seeker. Cortex thinking about going in, but... Nah. <clears throat> Alright, so all of a sudden, it was a bit of a passive early game. I mean, I wouldn't say passive. Maybe, or low, low kills. Because there was still a lot of pressure being put on, but... It just really turned up the second pretty much that Herald fight happened. It is going to be an ocean, actually, going that's going in. I'm not sure how that's going to affect either of them. Ah, uh, yeah, that's going to be Lolly falling as well. He will get a double shock wave, but nah. So Aqua going from 0-2 to that 3-2. Looking really nice on this Dragus, actually. Even though he was down 0-2, he was actually finding a lot of picks and getting a lot of CS. And so he's pretty ahead. Cordex potentially going to clutch this out. Is he going to get that guillotine? No, just... Barely, he tried to get one more auto to make sure that he would get the execute, but it cost him his life. 
And so, yeah, as I was saying, it is going to be Ocean. I'm not sure how that's going to work out in either favor. Both teams really just want to go in, I feel like. And that sort of health regen that the Ocean would give won't really help you survive this onslaught of CC on the kit side. You know, Turtle, you're uh, really low, buddy. So, they're gonna get both heroes. Every single objective, actually, including the tower, has been in favor of kits. Which has got them this 1k gold lead, despite this kill advantage on the side of uh, Burn. And yeah, Kai'Sa might be an insanely strong AD carry, but I don't know if that's enough to really survive against this much pick on the side of kits. Oh, he's going to flash into that glacial prison. Just does it. And there you go. Another kill. And another pick, really. Awkward. He's looking for something. He's looking for that one shot, but the silence is going to stop him from using that. Oh, he didn't even have ultimate. Never mind. <laughs> or, uh, Lolly was like wondering why the heck uh, Trinity just ulted him so soon. Uh, wait, Siren's gonna potentially fall. Oh, nice. Um, almost just almost gonna make that. Wow, that was a lot closer than I thought it would be. <laughs> the Ariana was like wondering why the heck Lissandra had ultimate again <laughs> in all chat. That's funny. Oh, we got another pause. Oh, we got a disconnection. Is someone... Is someone done? I'll lend him my... ADC is fixing a computer. According to... So, Payne is having computer issues, apparently. It's... It could be computer issues. It could be lead client. Who knows? Definitely the one person you don't want to have issues on this side of Burn Silver. I mean, he is 5 and 0. So... He is connecting back in. All right, he's looking okay. We should be starting back up soon, hopefully. So don't go anywhere. Maybe rage quitted. I don't know. He just said, <laughs> just said it was a disconnection. That'd be funny. <laughs> you never know. And so Ocker is going to be. He's been in this bot lane for I don't know how long now. And they actually might be setting up a dive because they're sending three people to that bot side, but they're going to call off that play. But still, Snorlax is um, interesting positioning from Cortex. He's just going to fall. You can see he's going for that Trinity Force build, which is definitely better than Black Cleaver, like the patch previously, but... Now that they've removed the true damage from Conqueror, you have been seeing more Darius's opt for Black Cleaver at times. Especially since it gives you more health and a quicker power spike. Especially since Cordex actually didn't bring Demolish, so one of the big perks from that Darius usually is split pushing with the Demolish because you stack so much health. But he's actually opting for just more pick potential. But at the same time, that doesn't mean he isn't going to be pressuring as much as it could be because Darius with that Sheen proc and the Demolish and all the health he would be stacking, he's actually one of the fastest turret takers in the game, plus a great Reef player. So, and you can see he's 79 CS at 18 minutes. He has like no gold. He sold all of his other items just for that one power spike. And already X Trinity is on his way to a Zanyas, which is going to completely shut down the guillotine, provided he times it correctly. And so, Cordex might not be looking for a great time with how behind he is. Um, Lolly, he is two levels down, but item-wise, it's not too bad. It's mostly even besides the uh, Sork Shoes difference, albeit Aqua hasn't shopped in a while. And he is going to be spot by that ward, and he's just going to inch that one. <laughs> He tried so hard to get yet another pick, but Burn Silvers at this point, they're just like, how many times I gotta teach you this lesson, old man? You can't you can't expect me to fall for that over and over again. 
And so all of a sudden, oh, Baba Smurfing is going to get caught. He's just running in with no vision. That control ward is just going to spot them. And with a jungler dead, they're not even going to try going for something. It is a tower trade, but that's about it. They are actually not that down on gold, but the XB difference is just pretty massive. Albeit not as bad as it used to be. Actually, pain is up in levels, but the solo lanes are both quite down. Cordex by two, actually, which is pretty insane. Norlax going to spot him, and Eno Turtle also trying to find his way. Cordex. Oh, he walks into that cocoon. But he's still a speedy boy, so there's a good chance he's going to make it out. But Ocker, he is going to find his mark on that Body Slam flask. I mean, he missed the Body Slam, but he got the flask, so... It's going to work out either way. They could be potentially setting up that early Baron, actually. They have the ocean to regen up. And they have a bit of tankiness from the mountain to sustain it. It might not be killing it faster, but it'll keep them healthy. Trinity, he's going to find himself a pick, potentially, but nah. Not even potentially anymore. He's just going to die, but... I mean, he distracted them. Albeit, there wasn't really much they could do on the side of Burn Silver. That's just going to be a free Baron. After Cordex kind of just fell. And all of that top lane pressure just gone so yeah i feel like all of the damage right now is on the side of pain but i don't know if you want it on your 80 carry against a team that has this much lockdown they're gonna have to do their absolute best job of peeling for that man while he puts on his carry boots Still a good performance though from Pain. He's actually been playing this quite well despite his team being down as a whole. He did win his bot lane. He played pretty smart. And yeah, that's why he got such a big lead on his end. He already has his Rage Blade and his Renan. So like, yeah, he's going to be hurting quite a lot. He does need his Zhonyas though. I think the Zhonyas will be really, really important against a team with this much poke potential but you can only get so much gold to funnel and I mean Saren he doesn't have the rage blade he just, just opts for a uh, phantom dancer just keep himself a little bit more safe I mean there's so much damage on the side over there that just a bit of safety I guess not the worst thing in the world. They're gonna just constantly try to force down mid. I mean, when they're a pick team, you don't really have to play the 1-3-1. One, one. You can just constantly just charge in with brute force. But it does seem like actually uh, Silver are holding their own and they might actually have to just call off this play because otherwise this Baron isn't gonna do a whole lot. Oh, he finds himself one with that flash, but he's just going to potentially end. Oh, but great, actually, bait there. Awkward is going to fall. Nice, actually, condemned by the vein. The Noxian Guillotine is going to find another one, and I feel like that was really sloppy. They did come out on top on the side of um, Kitalano, but I felt like it could have been a little bit cleaner. I'll just say that right now. They basically went in at the time that was least expected for me personally because I felt like they would have called that play a lot sooner, but last second decided to go for it. Ooh, the Cocoon actually going to land. That could be big. And Trinity is actually going to take it, and there you go, another kill. And that's going to open up that inhibitor. And so Gold Swing just out of nowhere after that one play by Trinity. It looked so bad, but he was able to get that ultimate off just barely. And he is going to lead his team to a huge advantage now they aren't quite at the territory where they're 100 percent guaranteed to win you can see the gold lead it's big but it's not impossible pain actually just going to just snipe him down 
Yeah, he's actually going to also take down the Saren. It looked close for a second, but Pain just too dang ahead, and that's two down. But they're not gonna do anything with it. The dragon is respawning soon, but look at all look at all that vision on the side of uh kits. So yeah, they're looking for that big Oh the cocoon lands! That was a max range cocoon, but pain flashes out just barely. He didn't even have his key SS up, which you can see he did buy instead of the Zanyas. And it actually paid off quite a lot because if he went for the stopwatch, he wouldn't have made that play at all. That little bit of MR plus the uh, CC negation, yeah. Cordex, he is fancying himself Eno Turtle, who's trying to charge in and get himself a kill. Yep. <laughs> Notice how I said that Cordex is fancying it because he wanted that, obviously. He obviously wants that support who is... Just, yeah, not having the best game, I feel like, despite being on the winning side. You gotta feel like, despite, like, I don't know. The victory is definitely gonna be in the hands of Snorlax and Trinity and Aqua, as opposed to this bot lane. I'm not sure if the bot lane is doing the absolute best right now on the side of Kits. As opposed to how they're playing. So, I guess I just gotta be grateful that they have better macro and just, you know. Not just them as a team. Well, you look at Burn Silver, it is just that bot lane at this point. But Cortex getting that kill is a uh, motivation booster, really, to get that solo kill, even if it is a kind of stupid support. And yeah, we're just going to reset only 4,000 4, gold for um, the lead. Vayne, he is actually going to get that Ridge Blade. He wanted that protection from the Phantom Dancer first, but now he's just going to go for the full damage. But even though they're able to get all these kills, they can't crack these um, structures down. But by having those kills, they are keeping gold pretty competitive at this point. And so when they do get those kills, they can just charge it down and it won't matter Oh, are they actually going to go for Baron yet again? But look at all the vision actually on the side of uh, Burnt Silver. Yeah, I don't think they're going to find anything. Trinity? He takes it, actually, and he's going to find himself a potential kill, but Lolly Luther is going to find his way out. Cordex now joining the fray, but he's baiting. He's actually putting so much time on this side of Silver. That was almost like the craziest bait I've ever seen. Going straight into that base, basically running it down to give your team Baron. They're just gonna start it anyways, and it doesn't matter if Old Mountain doesn't exist anymore, you're still gonna shred this thing with the Rage Plate Vein. And it seems like there's no position for um, Silver to protect the Baron from falling, so. They're just gonna hope that they can do something about the Siege, but I feel like. These Baron power plays have been really good from the side of Kits, so. Ooh, is Saren gonna make it up? He stopped his recall? Why? What are you doing, buddy? Was it. Wait, did he just actually stop his recall, or was it something else that stopped it? I don't know what. Was it a Ludens or something? Did he get clipped randomly? I'm not sure about that. I don't think he was going to be that stupid to think he was going to go find a kill. But yeah, we're at the point where it's just about can they pull off the power play. And they did a great job last time, but we're at the part where it's a little bit harder where you have to take down these inhibitors. But oh, so much damage from pain is going to just... That should be a free tower at this point. When your main damage source is gone, yeah. There's no way you can defend this. Meanwhile, bot lane is also going to fall. He's actually going to find himself a bit of a pick, but Trinity, you have a huge health lead on Cordex, and Cordex, yeah, Cordex is at the point of just tilt. 
When he died top, he, was just, he just looks done now. And that's three and hips falling. This should surely just be the game. It might not have been the absolute fastest, but it was convincing towards the mid game, nevertheless. There was a bit of life on the side of um, Bird Silver, but Kits, they just have just superior team fighting, superior gameplay. They had everything, man. There was actually a bit of a fight back on the side of Pops Murphing, but they're running for, away from their base. What are you doing in your own base, buddy? Get back into the fountain. And the minions are just going to finish it off. And there you go. It is going to be Kitsilano taking that one. So, actually quite nicely played. It was a little wonky in some areas, a little shaky, but either way, great stuff. And actually, a really impressive performance from the side of X-Trinity. You can see from the damage graph, it was him of all people who did the most. And even, actually, he did even more than the Kaisa, who was just 1v9-ing. Wow. And so there you go. That's going to be, I believe, the last game of the day. And yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that match, and I'll see you guys next time.